we are going to welcome Kate Huser Santucci and Amy Kohler Anderson. They are both living and making art in Dayton, and between them, they have figured out how to use found bones and glitter on the same piece of work and still remain friends. For them, collaboration is not just a buzzword, but has become a way of thinking about creativity, friendship, and a new way of working. So let's welcome Amy and Kate. Kate and I had worked on our Third Street murals across the street from each other. We were familiar with each other's artwork and shown at some of the same venues. In August 2016, at the DVAC CSA Harvest Party, we decided to collaborate. At the time, we were basically strangers. That is true. <laughs> we were chatting about the upcoming proposal period for the Dayton Visual Arts Center, and we both had decided to submit. Amy asked if I would be interested in collaborating on a project. She had had prior experience in collaborations, and we both loved one another's work and realized that we actually had a lot of shared interests. In some ways, our artwork is inspired by similar elements. We are both drawn to natural forms, particularly plant life that has lots of flowing and twisting parts. We really like minute details. Animals, especially birds, and elements of science also work their way into both of our artistic creations. <laughs> okay, so you can see, although expressed quite differently, that those same themes of biology, details, birds, and nature show up in my work as well. We decided that this was a strong unifying factor that we could work with and build on in a collaboration. That is not to say that we didn't have our challenges, though. There are also a lot that is different about our artwork. One major difference is that I work with water-based materials, such as acrylic paints and mediums. I also tend towards a more intense palette of jewel-toned or toxic colors. Even when I have a more muted palette, there is the glitter factor. <laughs> <laughs> so much glitter. <laughs> <laughs> so my work has a conspicuous lack of glitter, and my preferred palette has been a warm, earthy, natural hues. They tend to be more subdued as I'm working in a completely different medium. I use encaustic paint, which is beeswax and oil-based. I often lean on more naturally hued elements such as graphite and unfiltered beeswax, and when I do use color, it's generally softer. When we, st when we started the proposal for the Dayton Visual Arts Center, we knew it would not be a typical two-person show. Every newly created work would be a collaboration of both of our styles and materials. Each piece would be traded back and forth over the course of a year until the work felt finished. <clears throat> so part of the proposal was that we would meticulously track every change, addition, or subtraction to each piece. And we would do that on a log that would be included for the viewer in the show itself. So it would be a glimpse into our process, successes, and mistakes. Amy wrote here in red, and I wrote in black, so that each of our work would be apparent to the viewer. You could go and read what we actually did. The scale and shape of the wood panels was very important to the series. The panels are just eight inches in diameter, which invited the viewer to get close to examine. The circular shape evoked the idea of both macro and micro worlds, as well as the idea of cycles and repetition. It was also nice not to worry about which direction was top or bottom while we worked. <laughs> Yeah, that worked out. <laughs> so we had to agree on some basic rules as we began. We would not use one another's primary medium. So no acrylic for me, no encaustic for Amy. All the other materials were fair game. Once the piece was out of our hands, it no longer belonged to us. We would, consult, we would not consult each other about changes. That was important. And we <laughs> would work independently in our own studios. An early rule was that nothing was sacred, even if it had eyes. For example, the image in the upper left was Kate's start, the upper right was my addition. After a series of trades, it was clear the figure no longer worked in the piece. Our goal was both to move the piece towards completion, and there was no malice in major changes or elements that did not work in the whole. So we had some challenges to figure out in combining our mediums. Acrylic is not traditionally combined with encaustic. The slick surfaces of acrylic paint can be difficult, uh, difficult for encaustic to adhere to. With encaustic paint, layers of wax must be fused with heat, and it turns out that heating up with ac acrylic with um, a heat gun mostly just melts it. <laughs> <laughs> 
who would have thunk it? We found success through experimentation, sometimes after a series of failed attempts. I knew that I needed to add textures that the encaustic could grip onto. It was fun to layer the materials, like how Kate would create a wooden framework that I could fill with glitter and pouring medium. <laughs> then over that, she could layer rice paper and wax. <laughs> Every time, with I've got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> the panels we were using as a substrate had a flat front and a concave back. So whoever started a particular piece got to decide which side they wanted to use. The piece on the left um, used the flat surface to build upon, and the one on the right here took advantage of the concave surface to add some sculptural elements into the center. We would not consult each other on the panels, and there was not a defined goal in mind. The work became a dialogue, a push and pull of materials and narratives. Some trades resulted in subtle changes, while other times the panel would return barely recognizable. Each piece resolved naturally, as we both worked very intuitively, continuing to alter the piece until it felt resolved. Mm -hmm. When we traded the panels, there were always surprises. We learned quickly to let go of the preciousness of our own work, which is very freeing. Um, I did find that it was easier to allow changes to my own work than to change Amy's. Um, it was a learning process, so there was not a set number of pieces or time limit set for trades. We just exchanged pieces when we felt done with that layer. It was interesting to see how polite and cautious we were with each other in the beginning. As we continued to trade the, plan the panels and get to know each other better, we brought more humor to the process and challenged the materials. Not only did this improve the panels, but strengthened our friendship. We also kept a good pace, trading panels every two to three weeks. Our visual dialogue included a lot of boundary pushing. We experimented without fear and often used unexpected materials and techniques. This piece started out with moldy joint compound and neon latex, thank you, Amy, and ended with a shimmery lagoon of wax, pouring medium, and built-up textures. <laughs> Having run the Rosewood Gallery for a decade, installing art shows was not new to me. But what was new was working side by side with Kate instead of in our separate studios. It was wonderful to make real-time decisions together, finding the flow of the show through a new form of collaboration. Working on the title wall together really highlighted our varied styles. I am a speed demon with my process, and Kate is the thoughtful planner. <laughs> I had to take a break. <laughs> there was a great sense of accomplishment in the show's opening and seeing a year's worth of work coming together. Part of that was being able to share our working method and style of collaboration with others. We've both seen one another's influences on our newest work, and I suspect that that impact will be a very long-lasting one. I now love glitter. <laughs> I knew I would bring you to the dark side.